Okay, awesome. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, yeah. I'm Kristen Matahi. I'm a registered dietitian. I uh, work primarily with athletes. So um, I work at USC right now, actually just switch sports from football. Um, now I'll be working with uh, the indoor volleyball teams, beach volleyball, and basketball. So kind of switching realms there. Um, before that, I had worked kind of in a variety of different sports settings, various levels of athletes from high school all the way up to kind of Olympics. So bunch of different sports and a bunch of different levels. So kind of have a, a wide variety there, which is cool. And I know you had mentioned you were at uh, Exos down in San Diego. Uh, yeah. Obviously, Kristen and I met through Concordia University, Irvine, of, of teaching a class. And um, you also have a, what I love is a passion for our sport. You were the, I think you had told me you were the club president, right, at Loyola Marymount? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't play in college, so I decided to, I wanted to stay in California. Um, so yeah, so I played club in college and ended up, yeah, kind of running that club uh, the last two years I was there, which was super fun. So yeah, and, and I have a, a great appreciation for both having played collegiately and then going to the University of Arizona and playing club as a super sure. senior for two years. Um, and then coaching club, you know, both indoor and beach um, at San Diego State. So yeah, uh, I've got a, a big feeling in my heart for the club athletes. So definitely. So what I wanted to do was just get uh, initially maybe your thoughts on why um, nutrition is so important for athletes. Um, you know, I've always uh, thought of it and, and tried to use the analogy of, you know, it's like putting gasoline in a car and, you know, try to explain to athletes. But I mean, you do this every day. You do this for a living. Um, you know, well, why should athletes uh, invest time and energy into this? We, we invest time and energy into strength training, into skill sure. training, but why not, uh, you know, what, why should we in, in nutrition? Yeah. I mean, I love your car analogy because I feel like it's, it's like, you know, athletes, I kind of relate to like the nicer sports cars, right. Versus like the lower end cars. And it's like, you never want to fuel those kind of cars with diesel gasoline. You want to do premium, right. So kind of same thing with the body and it might not show an effect right away, but over time, you know, that's going to really, really slow down that machine overall. So I think that's kind of like the longevity of an athlete's career is going to be hugely involved with nutrition. Um, but then just the, the day to days too, it's, it's something you're doing all day, every day. Like that's the only thing that, you know, you might practice for two hours and you might shrink train for an hour and um, things like that, but we're having to, to eat kind of all day, every day. So that's going to have such a huge impact on the body from the inside out um, and be able to really maximize the training that you're doing. So it's going to help kind of fuel the performance. Um, so fuel those training sessions and fuel the practicing. Um, and then it's going to help on the, the flip side with recovery, um, whether that's just from the strength training and the practice and the everyday wear and tear, um, or obviously in a, in a larger component with, um, any type of recovery from injury. So, um, basically, I mean, it's, it's the building blocks of the body, right? So whatever you need the body to do, you need to fuel it as such. So I think that's why nutrition is such a huge thing is that, you know, what you put in is what you get out, right? So you want to make sure you're fueling your body to be able to do the things that you want it to do. So if that's, you want it to go play volleyball and you want to do that for all four years of college or potentially beyond that, you want to make sure that you're fueling that way so that you're able to perform at your best. So in your current role, and obviously you've had some different ones with your, your other jobs, but yeah. would you, um, what types of topics and things do you talk about both with a, in a team setting and maybe if a player individually wants to work with you, are, are you addressing, you know, um, a meal plan, a journal, an app, um, you know, what types of things are you, you doing with them in, or, or just even with the whole team? Yeah. Um, so team stuff, typically it's going to be um, a lot of education, right? So around the meals, it's going to be more um, kind of what the different food groups do for the body. So um, I typically try to, to kind of categorize them in their function in the body, right? So carbs are going to be more like your fuel. So the higher your activity level, the higher your carb need. Um, protein is going to be kind of your building block. So any type of strength training, if you're trying to build or maintain muscle or even just repair muscle from those 
um, the activity that you're doing, that's going to be your protein. And then the fat's going to kind of help protect the body, um, both from injury and just kind of health wise, get that in. And then fruits and vegetables are also going to help kind of same thing, go in and repair and make sure everything's functioning properly. So kind of do some, some talks around that and kind of how to build a plate. Um, and then education around the training session, right? So whether that's practice or training, uh, what we're doing pre to fuel the workout or doing during to make sure we're maintaining, you know, hydration and electrolytes and fuel. And then what we're doing post to recover because that, that window is going to be super important for maximizing performance, particularly. Um, so kind of covering those two different topics of, you know, your overall daily nutrition and then hyper-focusing on in and around that training session. Um, and then individually with athletes, it's going to be a lot more, um, personalized, right? So based on their needs, what they're doing. So we do um, body composition testing. We sometimes do hydration testing. So based on some of those different things, um, weight goals, performance, based on what position you are, kind of what activities you're doing, um, what the ideal weight might be for that position, what the ideal body composition would be. Um, and that's obviously going to change too with different sports. Um, so kind of honing in on that. And then basically whatever helps the athlete. So some people really like a detailed, you know, meal plan of what exactly do you want me to eat throughout the day? And some people it's like, maybe let's cut down your, you know, fast food intake from six days a week to five days a week. And we'll just start there and kind of work, you know, work our way up from there. Um, so it's definitely, I try to focus on, you know, habits that are, are consistent and daily. Um, because what you're doing consistently every day is going to make a bigger impact than, you know, what you're doing once in a while. So again, if it's, you know, decreasing your fast food intake by one day a week, but you're doing that every single week, um, and we can build off of that, that's way better than, you know, me saying like one week, don't have any fast food, and then you go right back to it. Um, so again, kind of depends on the athlete, but yeah, definitely getting an idea of what are you currently doing? Let's find any areas that we can maybe improve or if there's any issues going on too, if there's an athlete that's bonking halfway through, through practice and is fatiguing or somebody who's, you know, kind of suffering any type of overuse injuries or anything like that, um, that we can kind of hyper-focus the nutrition on helping, you know, resolve that issue, then we can do that too. So you're, you're at a place where I think we could both agree resources for athletics is, is pretty good yeah. um, and, and I've worked at a couple of those schools and I know one thing when we have a position like yours um, in the athletic department that they did uh, obviously there was training table and they had an influence on what that looked like which was mm -hmm. great. Um, but they also did some you know cooking demonstrations and they'd go out in the you know community to a, to a store with mm -hmm. athletes and you know show them to you know look look, look at the back of a label and yeah. like hey when the first ingredient is sugar um or or something that's another name for sugar um, right you know what does that mean and um have are you doing any of that or have you done that and and if so, do you have anything as an example for, you know, like on YouTube or, you know, one of your cooking demonstrations or something just to give the athletes here an idea of what that looks like? Yeah, um, we just created a, a social media account. It used to be kind of uh, managed by somebody else. So we kind of just started fresh. Um, so that's kind of where we put a lot of our resources in terms of um, just sports nutrition information. So um we put a lot out on there we haven't really done many cooking videos that are like on the actual instagram account but we'll do those live a lot um or on the story that you can watch um in terms of grocery store stuff i'll do that kind of in person usually um we haven't done any of those on our instagram yet but hopefully with with everything that's going on with you know the whole quarantine and everything we want to put some of that stuff on there or at least what to look for on a food label um so different things like that but yeah we definitely want to try to build up that that kind of online presence as just a platform um so right now i've been kind of focusing on doing that for you know usc as a general whole rather than my own personal stuff but that's i mean definitely a resource if you guys aren't if you don't have one 
Um, that's okay. an account that anybody can follow. It's called Fuel on SC. Um, Fuel so, on SC. Yeah. And, and that's on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that would be a good one for any type of nutrition info. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Um, what is your definition of eating healthy for a college athlete? Um, what, you know, I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff that can go into that, but you know, yeah. what, what would you, you know, somebody that's not in the general public and, and I've always felt like a lot of the fad diets or things, you know, are great for maybe, um, you know, the average person, but you know, we're talking and, and speaking with people that commit, you know, at least two hours a day of, you know, typical physical activity and that's not the norm, um, but what, what, what would your definition of, you know, eating healthy for that college athlete um, be? Sure. Um, I think honestly for athletes mainly, it's just going to be, I, I love the term fuel because I think that that's going to be the biggest thing, making sure that you have enough um, nutrients and fuel on board to make sure that you're performing at your best and recovering okay from those sessions. Um, so I think that that's, that's the biggest thing for athletes. And I think that that um, is probably why a lot of those fad diets don't work well for athletes because it's typically cutting something out. Um, and that's basically for athletes, it's cutting out fuel for them. So, um, they're going to have a, a higher carbohydrate need than most general population people. Um, I feel like carbs used to get a bad rap, then it was fat and now it's back to <laughs> carbs, but carbs are really, I mean, for your general population, everybody needs carbohydrates. But if somebody's, you know, has a desk job and maybe they'll go to the gym or eat, maybe not, um, you know, they'll have a lot lower carb needs than an athlete because if you are, you know, doing something two hours out of day, probably pretty high intensity as a college athlete, and you're still pretty young at that age too, um, you're going to need a lot of carbohydrates to kind of fuel that activity. You're going to need higher fat and protein to help kind of recover from those sessions. So I think it's, um, yeah, just all about making sure you're getting enough on board to really fuel and repair everything that you're, that you're doing. There's been, you know, I think everybody learns differently. Uh, some are visual, audio. Uh, I know writing things down for me, for example, helps. Um, sure. Do you recommend food journaling or using an app or, or doing anything for athletes? Do you think that that's beneficial? Do you think it's over the top because then it creates people to obsess over it? Um, you know, wh where is your stance, I guess, on um, you know, utilizing something like that? Yeah, um, I think that's that's good as like a tool. Um, so that's something I'll use to kind of a educate the athletes on you know being mindful about what that like really learning about what they're actually putting into their bodies because sometimes we either over or underestimate you know what we're putting in sometimes. So some people have this concept of like I'm eating so much and they put it in a food journal and they're like oh actually I'm not actually eating that much. Um, so sometimes though those athletes are underfueling. Um, and then there's some athletes also that are maybe not aware of portion sizes. So they're eating, you know, spoonfuls of peanut butter and they don't realize, you know, how calorie dense that is. Right. So you write it down and you look at your actual portions. It just helps kind of be a little bit more mindful of like, what am I actually eating? Um, so that's like one way to kind of utilize it. And then it's helpful, obviously for me as a dietitian, if we're going to do some sort of a meal plan, like let's see what you're currently doing. Right. And kind of start from there. Um, that's super helpful because sometimes, you know, schedule plays a role and, you know, certain teams, I had a beach volleyball this last season, um, before it got cut, they had, um, some of them like woke up, they had class, then they went straight to weight training, straight from weight training to practice. So they had an hour of weights straight into, they had to walk across campus. So it was like a 30 minute break. And then they had like a two to two and a half hour practice. Um, and by the time they were done with practice, you know, it'd be like two 30 in the afternoon. So some of them would be like, I ate breakfast, but it was so close to weights that, you know, I didn't eat that much. And so they're really not eating until like three. And then some of them were like, I didn't want to eat at like 8 PM after class. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's like rework this and figure out the scheduling portion of it. Right. So it's helpful to see a food journal sometimes because I can kind of see, okay, what, what does your schedule look like? And then it's also, again, with that education, it's easy for me to kind of go through and, and easily kind of like 
point out different areas that like, okay, here's, here's a point where we can really improve and whether it's portion size or timing or um, even a little bit of both, right? If it's like before and after training, we can really hyper-focus on, you know, here's a better option for before training for fuel purposes and here's a better option for recovery um, and really targeting those, those specific areas. And maybe it's an athlete that's needs a lot of work and maybe it's an athlete where it's like, cool, everything looks great except for, you know, these one or two areas. Let's just fine tune some things. And uh, it makes a huge difference, which is awesome. So I think as a tool, it's great. And I think if it's somebody, you know, in the off season, if they're focusing on a body comp change um, and it helps them to be more mindful to like log it, I think that that's super helpful. Um, it can get a little tedious to do it all the time. And I think sometimes if we're in season and we're focusing more on performance rather than body composition, sometimes it can, you know, kind of lead down the, the rabbit hole of being a little too hyper-focused on it. Um, so we want to make sure we're utilizing it as a tool during the, the most appropriate times of kind of the, the year and the training cycle that they're in. Um, but I definitely think it's a helpful tool and, you know, kind of go from there. Um, is there an app, a free app or anything that you've used that you'd recommend? Yeah, I think the most like widely used one is MyFitnessPal. Um, that one's pretty easy. It has a ton of different foods on there, different brands. So you can just create an account. Um, you can put your like goals in, but it's more for a sedentary population. So I wouldn't, it will give you a calorie goal. I wouldn't go off of that, but it will, it's a free thing to just track your food. Um, so I would just, you know, use it more for that just to keep track of your own stuff. Um, and again, it has like a, a wide variety and you can make recipes on there too. So if there's something that you eat often, um, I feel like a lot of us cook the same things, right? Especially I, I remember I was in college, I didn't cook at all. I was doing like, you know, different frozen meals and things like that. But if you are cooking, um, it's awesome because you can just save your recipes in there. So if you're like, I made this huge recipe, put it in there, save it. And then you can just click on that and say how much you had. Um, so it's a pretty user friendly app. Um, and then if you had somebody you were working with, like you can, so I could friend my athletes on my fitness pal and I can go in and see, um, their food log, which is cool because then they don't have to worry about sending it or writing it down or anything. So it's pretty easy. Awesome. Awesome. Um, being budget sensitive, uh, as the head coach and mm -hmm. not with unlimited resources, when I take the team, for example, hopefully this fall, um, to eat, is there, you know, I've always been a big fan of, you know, never, I get to kind of dictate where we go. Uh, sure. So, you know, always staying away from a, a fast food place unless it's absolutely mandatory. Um, and obviously trying not to drink, you know, pop and, and do some things. But is there a, where does your brain go with, hey, this might be, you know, a good option, you know, three or four hours before, I'm assuming would be your recommendation before, you know, match time. Mm -hmm. But is there some places or foods that, you know, maybe uh, aren't on the, you know, 15 to 20 dollar, you know, bill menu that um, you feel like, hey, this would give good fuel and this is what I would recommend, you know, maybe as a pre-game meal. Um, is there any sure. recommendations that you could, that are budget friendly that you could think of? Yeah, um, I think most of my like more um, like the the teams that have a little bit lower budget typically will go um, pre games usually some sort of like a usually like a sandwich or something so like Jimmy John's or um, where else do we go? Um, that's kind of like the go to a lot of times is Jimmy John's if it's really far in advance. Um, Sometimes we'll do like some sort of cafe or like local kind of cafe that does more like locally sourced stuff, which is always good. Um, otherwise, I try to stay away from like a lot of times post game, we'll do more of like the Qdoba or Chipotle kind of bowl thing like that. Um, those are a little heavier for before. That's usually doesn't kind of go over well, especially with a sport where you're jumping so much. It doesn't usually... Um, digest quite as quickly. So a lot of times that'll lead to some sort of cramping. Um, so yeah, usually like sandwiches or we'll do, um, we'll have like our on-campus cafeteria do stuff for us sometimes too. Um, so we'll kind of just have them do like a little like buffet line of 
um, grilled chicken and, you know, vegetables, potato, like mashed potatoes or just roasted potatoes and rice, things like that. Um, so if there's any local restaurants that do something like that, where it's just like, you know, a, pr a pretty clean, like protein, carb, um, vegetable, then it's pretty easy to go do something like that. But sandwiches are an easy for, for sure for a low budget. And they're kind of, you know, if you're traveling, they have those same places a lot of times kind of nationwide that you can go to. So that's kind of easy. Well, why would athletes want to stay away from having anything deep fried prior to competition? Great question. So deep fried stuff is obviously very high in fat because of how, you know, it's fried in that fat. Um, and so what fat does in the body, especially that type of fat. So that type of fat is going to be saturated, which is, um, pro inflammatory in the body. So it's going to actually inflame the body, which also happens during exercise. So, um, it's going to kind of promote that inflammation already before, and then it's also going to slow down digestion. So fat and fiber are both kind of slow down digestion. So for a normal meal, that's great to have, you know, some sort of healthy fat, ideally, right? It's going to come more from like your plant sources. Um, but fat and fiber are usually good because it's going to kind of slow down the digestion. It's going to keep you full for a little bit longer, um, kind of steady out all of your, you know, blood sugar levels and things like that. So energy levels throughout the day, it'll kind of stabilize. Um, if you're doing that right before a game, it's going to just sit in your stomach. Um, and it'll digest slower. So then once you start exercising, that stuff's still in your stomach, it's going to basically, the blood's going to go to the working muscles when you start exercising and away from the stomach. And so that food's then just going to sit there, which is how, like why basically we get those like side stitches or you get like a stomach ache or anything like that when you're, you're playing, which is definitely not what we want, right? When we're playing, um, we want to make sure that we're feeling good and um, we don't have any extra issues going on. So that's definitely one main reason to stay away from that on top of, you know, the inflammation that we're causing that'll kind of just basically like slow us down, make you feel a little bit sluggish. Um, probably not going to help with your recovery either because basically, you know, exercise is going to kind of inflame the body. So we want to make sure that we're decreasing that as much as possible to help with the recovery process. So um, kind of going to hurt us on both ends there if we go for the the deep fried foods before. Awesome. Yeah. Um, can you explain the difference between a calorie? So let, let me give you an example. Um, let's just say 140 calories is what the average can of soda is, um, hmm. which, is which is might be pretty close. Um, Verse 140 calories of broccoli. Sure. Um, what they both say 140 and right. to the lay person hey that's 140 you know pieces of energy that i'm going to get sure the way your body digests and uses and yeah mm -hmm. so can you just elaborate on what that difference looks like um and, and maybe let's not use a can of soda because i see several people stop at Starbucks um, oh, yeah. and get a grande uh, it's different colors and it has white stuff on the top and, <laughs> um, and it's hard I, I'm, I'm a tea drinker I'm not a coffee drinker it doesn't mean I'm better it doesn't mean I'm, I'm anything other than I'm just different but but I, I do know that that big thing that's different colors with white stuff on the top that looks fancy and costs like 750 yeah, so a true. lot of calories in that um, yeah. and that, and that's pretty popular for the college athlete, you know, sure. if there's one on campus or nearby to do. And, um, can you just address, you know, what those calories look like and what your body does with that of why having that before practice versus, you know, something like a green, um, what the difference is? Sure. Yeah. Um, so basically, I mean, kind of common conception amongst like general population, right, is a calorie is a calorie. So they're like, oh, it's the same amount of calories, same thing. Um, and if we're just looking at the very, very simplified version of like my weight today versus like maybe a month from now, probably not going to make a huge difference. But when we're looking A, long term, and then B, at just overall health and performance, uh, it's going to be a huge difference because basically... Um, 
you know, the calories in something like a Frappuccino or, you know, one of those sugary drinks, we call them empty calories, right? Because basically there's not going to be a whole lot of nutrition out of those other than just calories. It's just going to be kind of sugar. Um, and there's not a whole lot of, you know, vitamins, minerals, fats, you know, things like that, that are going to help the body really optimize health and performance. So basically those things are going to kind of go in, you know, this, this extra, you hear added sugar a lot, um, which is obviously what's in that. Um, and so what that kind of does is it's rapidly absorbed by the body because there's, there's no other, you know, nutrients in there. So there's none of that fat or, um, fiber in there that slows down digestion. So it's going to really like spike your, your blood sugar, which blood sugar is kind of just, you know, your, your energy, right? But if, if you get this huge spike, the body kind of freaks out because it likes to kind of stay in this middle ground. Um, so you get this spike, the body freaks out and it tries to clear it really quickly. So it sends out, you know, another hormone that, that sends a signal to store, um, that sugar. So then it, it clears the, the sugar really rapidly as well, which is when you have this, this kind of downfall. Um, so basically it spikes really quick. The body then sends a signal to store it. Um, so it clears it out of the bloodstream. So it doesn't cause this huge spike. It wants to get back to that middle ground. Um, so then basically it then gets rapidly like stored um, essentially like in the cells. So you're not going to have it available as energy anymore. So you're going to get this crash, right? You're going to feel a little tired after the spike drops. Um, and then it's also going to be more, you're more likely to store that as fat, um, not be able to use it as fuel. And then also that added sugar is also going to be pro-inflammatory, right? So it's going to kind of like inflame the body and send out these signals to your body to kind of, it just kind of goes into panic mode a little bit. <laughs> your body just really doesn't like that. Um, so that over time, um, obviously in extremes, that's, you know, going to lead to I, in very extremes. It's going to lead to diabetes, right? Because that constant up and down like that, um, your body's going to like keep overreacting and then it's going to get tired of doing that. So then eventually that kind of turns into another like health issue, um, versus if you're eating, you know, more of an, a normal meal or a piece of fruit or something like that, maybe it has the same amount of carbs but it's going to be from, you know, your natural sugars and it's paired with other types of nutrients. So it's digested a little bit slower. Um, so it doesn't spike quite as high. It gets this nice level, um, increase. So then you're going to have a level, you know, decrease. So you're not going to have this rapid rise and fall. Um, and then you're also not going to have that added inflammation. So it's actually going to kind of help the body work better. Um, and it's not going to go into this like panic mode. So, um, without really diving into the, the deep biochemistry of it, that's kind of the simplest way to put it. But basically you, you just want to keep your body as level as possible. Um, so it doesn't, you know, go into this panic mode or get inflamed and things like that. That's going to cause, you know, a whole cascade of issues down the line. And, and I don't know about your experience, but my experience um, would be, and you've already hit on fast food, um, that, you know, a college athlete would consume because it's easy and you can fit it even yeah. on campus right on the way out. Yeah. Um, caffeine, you know, and obviously these sugary drinks, either, you know, a Red Bull or a Frappuccino or something, you know, are, are very common. And, and the other one that I've noticed um, throughout my time is alcohol, um, yeah. that, you know, they will consume. Um, yeah depending on the day or the time of year, maybe more than others. Um, but what does that do, especially again, it's the, the machine, the mechanism, you know, dealing with alcohol and then obviously trying to maybe perform, um, you know, the next day or having it after, you know, right after you play. Um, what, it, what happens uh, biologically or, you know, how is your body, you know, using that or not using it? Yeah. Um, I think alcohol is a super interesting one. Um, it's basically, um, I mean, it's a toxin to your body, right? So that's, that's essentially why you get drunk. And then eventually, um, if you go to the extreme, right, your, your body, you kind of get this blackout, right? And that's basically your body shutting down that process, um, to kind of go into survival mode for the rest of it. It basically keeps functioning what it really needs to survive life. Um, and it shuts off any unnecessary things. So like memory, 
will kind of just get shut off. So obviously that's an extreme, um, but it is going to stay in your, your system for, it's going to kind of affect performance for basically like 48 hours, depending on how much you drink. So if you're, you're going to be drinking before a game, that's going to, that will affect performance. Um, in terms of after a game, it's going to kind of hinder recovery as well. Um, because basically what it does, like I said, it's in, you know, a toxin. Um, so the liver has to, to kind of function and process that, that alcohol. So the liver basically stops its fat burning process. So it kind of, again, the liver basically just, you put something in and the liver's like, I need to get this out. Um, cause it shouldn't be here. So it basically just hyper focuses on, let me filter out the alcohol. And so it kind of halts again, like fat burning. Um, it halts the recovery process. It's pro-inflammatory. So again, if you're, you know, exercising or playing a game and anything like that, and then you drink alcohol, you know, you're kind of double inflaming the body. Right. So, and inflammation is going to lead to, you know, delayed recovery, soreness, all that kind of stuff. Um, so especially, I mean, if you're injured, that's going to be like probably the number one thing that I'm like, please don't do that when you're injured. Like if you can just not, um, but obviously, you know, alcohol is like a part of social and, you know, if you're in college, probably going to drink. So typically, um, my general rule of thumb is, you know, if you're going to do it, let's strategize and let's be smart about it. Right. So obviously in season, ideally not the time to do it because we're focusing on performance. We're trying to, you know, win games and things like that. And so that's one of the things that it's more of a mentality piece with athletes, right? It's like, you're here to, to perform and to play games and things like that. So that is one of the sacrifices that comes with being an athlete is, you know, you're not going to be able to do, you know, some of your friends might not be athletes and they don't have to make that sacrifice, but that's something that a lot of times, um, ideally, if we can just not during season, great. Um, so off season would be the better time to do it. And then around all of that stuff, we want to make sure we're trying to do it away from any of our training, because basically, again, it's going to kind of hinder performance if we're doing it before, and then it's going to hinder recovery if we're doing it after. So ideally we want to make sure that we're trying to time that, um, basically kind of around our training so that we're not hindering any of that stuff. And then being smart with what we're doing when we're drinking, right? So typically like a one-to-one -one ratio would be good. So every alcoholic drink you have, you know, putting a, a glass of water in between it so that we're not dehydrating ourselves. We're kind of helping ourselves out. Um, and then another thing that I remember a lot of um, college athletes do is, you know, they know they're going to go out and drink a bunch. So then they don't eat dinner because they think, you know, calories a calorie. So they're like, in order to not gain weight, I'm not going to eat dinner. And then I can go drink, which is really bad idea. Um, it's a, a good way to like be really sloppy, but you want to make sure that we're, you know, eating a healthy dinner, making sure it's balanced. So we have something in our system. So your body has something to run on, making sure that we're fueling it, feeding it, making sure that it's as healthy as it can be. And then we're going to go, you know, have a couple drinks, hopefully with water in between to make sure that we're again, trying to not throw that, you know, body balance off too much. Again, we want to try to kind of keep it in this middle ground. Um, and any kind of extras like that, that you throw in are going to really like throw it all over the place. So if we can do in moderation, if we can put a glass of water in between, if we can eat a healthy dinner and then the next day again, like a lot of people are like the best way to detox is retox. So I'm like the next day, ideally we don't want to get up and have a really greasy breakfast. That's usually what sounds good. You know, you want to go and get something really like party. Um, but ideally getting up and again, having a balanced breakfast, um, and doing something like that to again, kind of help the body get back to this homeostasis, fil filter out the alcohol and recover, um, from the drinking basically is kind of what we want to do there. Awesome. Um, a couple of questions from the team. Uh, they asked about portions, sizes, or what types of food to eat and, and when, or how often, either before or after, you know, the practice and stuff. Yeah. You, know, you throw out, and, and you did a little bit, you know, with some chicken or rice, uh, you know, but can you throw out just some options or things that you seem to be, you know, productive fuel for, for the athletes? And yeah. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to like in and around training, 
basically before any type of training, so strength training or practice, you the main goal is to fuel that training session. So if we're talking within an hour of training, we want to really just focus on um, carbohydrates. And we actually want them to, it's going to kind of go against common thought here, but we want to go more for the simple carbohydrates. So fruit, um, if somebody has more of a sensitive stomach, even fruit juice would be fine at that point. Something basically that's going to fuel the body, but that's going to be digested quickly. So that's when we do actually want to stay away from fat, fiber, something that's going to be digested quickly so it doesn't sit in the stomach and cause any cramping. Um, so that's before, during, you know, water's just fine. If we're going longer than, you know, 90 minutes, which most, most practices do at least, um, that's when we'll want to do some sort of electrolyte. So um, I don't know, our, our USC um, has a partnership with Powerade. I think most schools have some you know, partnership with whatever electrolyte company. Um, so that would be good to do, you know, if you're going longer than 90 minutes. And then after training, you really want to make sure you're getting in protein and carbs. Basically, the carbohydrate type foods are going to help replenish your, your energy stores in your body that you just kind of use throughout the practice. Um, and then the protein is going to help repair and rebuild the muscles that you kind of just broke down throughout that practice. Um, so again, before it could be like a piece of fruit or um, maybe like a half of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. After you could do chocolate milk's a really good one basically because it has protein and carbs. Um, you could do kind of uh, fruit and nut butter if you have like any of those peanut butter packets or something like that. Um, I don't know if your school has ready to drink um, like protein shakes, those are fine. Um, so something like that where you're getting a little bit of protein and carbs. Um, and then in terms of kind of the rest of the day, just making sure your, your meals are balanced. So you want to make sure you have some sort of color on your plate. So whether that's fruit or vegetables, some sort of protein, some sort of carbs, some sort of fat. So protein is going to be, you know, meat, fish, eggs, something like that. Um, carbs can be potatoes, rice, um, bread, those things you want to, outside of training, go for more of the whole grains. So typically they're going to be more brown in color versus white in color. So typically brown rice versus white rice, um, because then you do get the fiber in there the rest of the day. Um, and then fat. So fat is going to be very anti-inflammatory for the body when it comes from a plant source. So avocados, nuts, seeds, um, any nut butters, um, and then things like, you know, your fatty fish like salmon, those are actually going to like help reduce the inflammation in the body. So really good for recovery, um, really good for kind of preventing any type of injury and just overall health. Um, the animal sources of fat, we want to just limit, don't have to like completely eliminate them, but just reduce the, the overall intake. So, you know, butter, the marbling on steak, things like that are going to be more of those pro-inflammatory fats that we talked about that we don't want a whole lot of. Um, so those are kind of the different food groups. And then in terms of how a plate should look, um, there's a lot of good resources on uh, the, the United States Olympic Committee site. So if you Google uh, USOC nutrition fact sheets, you can see the performance plates, um, which is what I'm going to talk about, but they'll have images on there that you can kind of see. And it's basically kind of like the government's my plate, but it's for athletes because that's obviously going to look different than the general population. But overall, you know, the higher your activity level, the more carbs you're going to need. So typically about a quarter of your plate should be protein. And then your carbs and your color should basically vary depending on your activity level. So if you're kind of on the lowest end of the activity level, so if you're kind of in that eight hour a week um, type period of off season, maybe you're going more often, half your plate's color, a quarter is carbs and a quarter is protein. Um, and then inversely, if you're kind of in this higher training phase, or maybe it's, you know, the, the week leading up to a game, maybe you're going half your plate's carbs, and then inversely, you know, you're reducing that color a little bit. So you're getting a little more fuel on board. So that's kind of typically how we'll design a plate. That, that's super helpful. And it kind of leads into one of the other uh, girls on the team that asked, can you just describe what a day of eating you know, should look like. And, and let's just, you know, plug in, you know, a 3.30 to 5.30 practice or something. And, and you kind of, one of the athletes there, you know, had said, hey, well, I wake up and I've got class and I go to weights. And, um, but, you know, when you wake up, you know, what would be a breakfast? You know, what, what exactly would you recommend or what it would look like? And then maybe a lunch and, a, you know, a dinner or something. 
Yeah, so breakfast, um, you can do, you know, some sort of vegetable omelet if you like that with like avocado on top, um, maybe a side of oatmeal for your, your carbs. Um, so that's going to be, you know, eggs are going to be your protein, get a little color in there with the vegetables or maybe a side of fruit. Um, avocado is going to be your, your healthy fat and then get a bowl of oatmeal. That's kind of your, your fuel there with your carbs. Um, so you could do something like that. Um, you could do, if you're going more kind of a standard American breakfast, you can do eggs. Um, maybe some roasted potatoes would be better than hash browns because the hash browns are going to be a little bit more fried. Um, but roasted potatoes, eggs, um, again, maybe some avocado. If you don't like avocado, then you could do a piece of peanut butter or almond butter toast on the side. Um, and then maybe a side of fruit there. So again, kind of just getting that balance in there. Um, if you're not a big fan of eggs, then we can just do like a huge loaded bowl of oatmeal. So, you know, oatmeal, um, making sure you're putting in some sort of maybe peanut butter or you can put walnuts in there with some berries or bananas chopped up in there. Um, and then maybe like a side of yogurt for some protein in there as well. Um, otherwise just add a couple more, you know, almonds or walnuts or something for a little added protein. Um, so that could be your breakfast and then lunch. If that's going to be, you know, if you're practicing at, you said three ish. Three mm -hmm. Um, so if lunch is around, you know, noon, hopefully still want to have a full balanced meal. So that could be, um, we're going to go some sort of like maybe a fajita bowl, right? So if we have, you know, some sort of sauteed bell peppers, um, maybe some grilled chicken or grilled steak or um, something like that, brown rice, some beans, some salsa on top. So that could kind of be a nice balance bowl. Um, if you're going to do a salad, make sure we're like getting some sort of carbs on there. We don't want to just have, you know, just the, you know, vegetables and the chicken. We want to make sure throw some garbanzo beans on there, some black beans, and, or we could just have a side of, um, you know, rice or potatoes or something like that, just to get a little extra fuel in. Um, and then we want to make sure kind of in between lunch and practice, that's like a good two to three hour window. We want to make sure we're having a little something before practice, just to make sure, again, we're getting that extra fuel on board for practice. So again, that could be something like a piece of fruit, a half a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, you could do kind of like a, a tiny bowl of oatmeal or a little like fruit and yogurt parfait, um, something small, kind of an hour before practice. Um, and then practice, you know, make sure you're hydrating um, all throughout the day, but especially during practice. And then ideally kind of right when practice ends within that 30 minute window, ideally you wanna make sure having a little something to already kind of start that recovery process. So chocolate milk's a really easy one um, just because it's just a grab and go kind of thing. Um, that's another instance where you could do, you know, half a PB and J or even like a half of a turkey sandwich, like turkey and cheese, something that's going to have, again, that carb and protein. Um, you could do another like fruit and yogurt parfait, something like that. Um, and so if that's at 530, then you know, maybe an hour, hour and a half later around 637 is when you're going to have your dinner. And that's again, going to be something balanced, similar to lunch. So that could be, you know, piece of salmon, grilled salmon, um, maybe some broccoli on the side and some brown rice. Um, you could do like quinoa instead of the rice. You could do potatoes instead of the rice. I like to do um, grilled yams with like cinnamon on it because I have a sweet tooth. So I'll do that sometimes with with dinner. Um, and then depending on, you know, your goal and how hard the practice was having a nighttime snack is totally fine too, if that's going to be needed. So that would be something where we're going to focus a little more on the protein and fat, just because carbs are going to be fuel. And if we're going to bed, um, we don't need those quite as much. So that could be something, um, pretty light, but you know, something to kind of top that off at night. So that could be something that we add in there for extra fuel. Awesome. Yeah. And you mentioned hydration, which was a, a question because we're at 4,100 feet here in Climate Falls. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure you would recommend probably drinking more than the normal person would because we're, we're at elevation. I, I would assume you would agree with that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I usually tell people, you know, 
urine color is the best indicator in terms of hydration just because it's it's different for everyone um so unless you're taking a multivitamin which multivitamins will kind of turn the urine like a neon color um but if you're not taking those urine's a really good indicator if you're kind of this clear to like lemonade color you're pretty much good to go. If you kind of get more towards like a darker lemonade or even an apple juice color, you definitely need to up that hydration. Um, so that's a good indicator, but a good general rule of thumb is about half to one ounce per pound of body weight. So if you're, you know, 150 pounds, getting somewhere between 75 to 150 ounces of water per day, excluding exercise. So that's going to be your needs outside of exercise. And then we're going to add on top of that for, you know, practice. Yeah, awesome. And you addressed one of the girls had asked about if she doesn't like red meat, you know, ways to get protein. And I know you mentioned several options, which is great. So that kind of knocks that one out. Um, one or two other quick things, resources, you know, is there any kind of, um, I, I don't even want to say a Netflix video or anything, because I think a lot of that stuff is uh, out of the up. So, um, yeah. But any videos or TED Talks or YouTubes or even a book um, that you would recommend that you'd say, hey, I think every athlete should watch this or read this um, because it really would help them, I think, give an understanding on education. Sure. Um, I'm with you on the Netflix stuff. There's really not <laughs> anything on there, to be honest with you, that's like in sound uh, scientific advice. So, um, not a whole lot of videos. I think um, in terms of resources, so the USOC that I had mentioned, their nutrition fact sheets are great. They have them on all different topics, vitamin D, you know, supplements, all that kind of stuff, the performance plates. So those are great to look at just on different, different topics. If you're injured, there's some on there for that. Um, other resources, I mean, I'm really into podcasts, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not a huge book person. I feel like nutrition books, too, it's hard because a lot of them are either too textbook-like or the ones that are just more books aren't super sound um, in terms of, like, based in scientific evidence. Um, if you're a huge nutrition nerd, um, Dr. Rhonda Rousey, or Rhonda Rousey, that's the um, boxer. Yeah. Rhonda, uh, I was like, she doesn't, um, Rhonda Patrick has a podcast, um, called found my fitness, which is great. That one really dives into like a lot of the science stuff behind it, but she'll go into, I mean, different intermittent fasting, what the science is with that. If you're interested in that, or she'll kind of focus on a lot of that stuff. So that's a really good one. If you really want to dive into it. Um, another one would be, Broken Brain Podcast is interesting. It's not all nutrition, but that one's a good one if you're um, kind of into more of like just overall health and wellness. Um, what else? Those are like my two favorite. Um, per, uh, Precision Nutrition has one and their Precision Nutrition is a very popular, uh, they have like a nutrition certification um, which is, you know, a little more basic for, you know, coaches and personal trainers and things like that. So that's, they have a podcast, but they also have, you know, kind of an online base. And I think they have an Instagram as well with a lot of good, um, tools on there too. So that could be a good one. Um, so those are probably my favorites. Um, it's hard. Yeah. Cause there's not, I mean, nutrition's one of those things, like there's so many books out there, but I, I haven't found one yet. That's just like, here's just the basics. It's like, you know, fat flush plan or like the keto diet. And I'm like, no, let's just go basic. So, um, or it's, you know, the textbook kind of thing. Um, so those are probably the best resources. Um, that I found and then, you know, different Instagram accounts, like the fuel on SC one that we created, you know, like dietitians are actually <laughs> putting that information out there and it's for athletes. So those are kind of the easier things to look at. If an athlete said to you, um, I eat like crap, but I burn it because I work out all the time. Oh yeah. Uh huh. What, what would you say to them? I get that all the time. Um, so I, yeah, you're going to burn it for sure. Um, if that's what you're going for. 
But typically what I say is like being an athlete, you want to really optimize your performance. Um, and eating like crap truly is not going to optimize your performance. You're basically taking probably a great athlete and you're making yourself good. Um, or you're going to have really great nutrition and you're going to take a good athlete and they're going to become great. So at some point, this good athlete, if you're great, they're going to pass you up. If you're eating like crap and they're not, they're just helping themselves and you're really just kind of hurting yourself at that point. So, um, and longevity of career is going to be another one. So, I mean, if you're just trying to get through the season, maybe you'll make it. Um, but if you're trying to have a long career, then that's, that's not going to, you know, help you out much either. Last thing I got for you. Um, yeah. You've done this, you know, you're not uh, one or two years into the field. You've been working with athletes and, and doing this for quite a while. Sure. Um, what is your best recommendation or takeaways um, that, uh, for example, a college athlete um, can, can, you know, if you had one or two of like, God, just if you could do this, this would really, I think, help in. Um, and I know just from my own experience of sitting in that seat, there's a lot of opportunities for distraction. Um, it's one of the reasons why I'm trying to do some of this stuff is to provide an education to understand how important, you know, putting uh, something in your mouth. You're in control of this, yeah. uh, which, you know, I think is really important. A lot of times, you know, you don't get to pick what you do in practice. Um, you don't get to pick what you learn in the classroom, but right. you to get to pick what you put in your mouth. Um, right. But what, what, what over your experience, you know, as you've worked with people, what, what are, you know, maybe one or two things that you'd say, gosh, I guess if you could do this, this would be really helpful. Yeah. Um, I'm super big on, on hydration. Um, just because I feel like that's such an easy thing to do. I mean, get a, a water, especially now that people are so, you know, against plastic. And I mean, I'm in California, so everybody here is like, really, you know, no plastic bottles. So if you get, you know, a water bottle and you just, it's such an easy thing to do. Like, okay, if your water bottle is 32 ounces and I need, you know, X amount of ounces a day, I just need this amount of this water bottle a day. Um, it's just such an easy thing to always have it with you. There's places to refill them everywhere you go. Um, and that's going to really just help. I mean, it's the transport system in the body. So it's going to help, you know, deliver nutrients all over the place. And it's also going to kind of add to, um, helping kind of reduce the, the risk for injury. It's not going to be a huge thing, but if you think about your muscles, kind of like a dish sponge, and if the dish sponge is dry, it's going to break pretty easily versus if it's wet, it's like pretty pliable. It's kind of like your muscles. So you're a little more likely to pull a muscle if you're dehydrated um, rather than being hydrated. So I think that's a good one. And then, I mean, if you look at charts that show the performance detriments, the more dehydrated you get throughout, you know, training or practice or a game, I mean, they're huge, right? So it shows, I mean, anywhere from like as little as a 2% decrease in body weight throughout your practice. So if you're you know, 200 pounds, that'd be a, a four pound weight loss during practice, which sounds like a lot, but it's really not. I mean, I feel like a lot of people lose that easily in practice. Um, that already right there is going to basically lead to increase, like you think you're working harder than you are kind of thing. So increases in, in perceived exertion, um, it's going to kind of decrease your your endurance overall and your all this output. So basically I feel like that's just a really easy one um, to just, I mean, it's kind of like the, the freebie questions on test, right? You just want to get those, those quick points really quick. So that's kind of like hydration. So that's one that I'm like, just get that down and then we can kind of focus on everything else. So that's one. Um, and then I think like with athletes, just really viewing food as fuel. I mean, I think a lot of times people, um, they're kind of like, oh, like I train so that I can eat whatever I want. Um, and I think we need to really reverse that thinking. I think we need to eat to, you know, be able to do whatever it is we want to do. So kind of reversing that thinking and making sure we're thinking about it as like, what I'm putting into my body is going to help or it's going to hurt my performance. So how is this going to make me feel? How is it going to help my performance get me towards my goals? Like what are my overall goals and how is this how am I helping myself at this meal or this snack or whatever it is? If it's, whether it's a body composition goal and off season, whether it's 
a, you know, your vertical jump and you need to go a little higher or just making it through a long match. Or if you guys, you know, go to five games or, or you guys out of three or five, but anyway, five, like if you go to that last game, right. And it's like half the points and you're like game point and you're tired. So again, it's like just making sure you're doing anything you can to give you that competitive edge because you know, maybe the other team's not doing that and you're going to have that advantage. So I think it's just viewing that more in that reverse terms of, you know, what I'm putting into my body, how is that going to help me with what I want to do with my body versus I'm going to train so that I can eat like crap later um, and not gain weight. And I don't think athletes have that luxury. I think, you know, general population, maybe like, maybe that's all you're focused on is how do I look? Um, but I think as athletes, I mean, that's, that's, awesome. And you can, you know, do that later in life if you want to look a certain way or whatever. Um, but I think it's awesome to be an athlete and be able to kind of like play around with how fueling kind of affects everything overall. Um, and I think it really all comes together. So I think kind of those two things I think would be the biggest things. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. I can't tell you much. I appreciate you taking yeah hour of your time today and educating us a little bit and, and giving us your perspective and yeah tell uh brad and jj hello over on the women's side for me and uh, i will definitely <laughs> i have i haven't chatted with them in a while so please tell them yeah. hello for me and uh yeah. again for your time and uh look forward to, to checking in with you as we kind of hopefully get moving in the fall yeah hopefully yeah thanks for having me awesome hey have a great day all right you too thank you bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.